Welcome back, Stasis 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And before I get started, if you like this video, please drop a thumbs up on it. It helps out the channel a whole bunch. If not, thumbs down also works. And if you like knife content and you're not already, smash that subscribe button with the bell notification so you don't miss any of the content. All right, today I have for you the Demco Knives AD 20.5 in the clip point variation. This knife came in at $150 when I bought it at Blade Show. Um... You can get it in the clip point, and you can also get it in what he calls his shark's foot blade shape. Um, both of them have the same shark lock mechanism, which we'll talk about in a little while. And uh, let's get some specs out of the way. Do so you have an idea of how big or how small this knife actually is? Uh, you have a total length of seven and five eighths inches, so it's gonna be in that medium to smaller range. You have a blade length of 3.16 inches. You have a grip area from this part of the choil to the back part of that choil, or the back part of the scale, of uh, three and a half inches. You have a very slender thickness in the scales of 0.38 inches. You have a width, closed width in the pocket from here to here of 1.44 inches. You have one eighth inch blade stock or 3.17 millimeters <clears throat> and the thickness behind the edge on my particular knife is 28 thousandths sharpened at the left side this bevel is 21 degrees and this one is 16 degrees all right before we go any further let's break off into some cutting uh footage and we'll see how it does all right we're gonna show the initial sharpness this is the factory edge nice and sharp All right, it did fairly well. I just kept trying to find myself where if I wanted to hold it back here like this or like this or over the top, I, I ended up doing like that, I'm pretty sure. See how well it held up so far. Yep, that's good. All right, we're gonna do some <clears throat> light batoning through this uh, pine two by four with the rubber mallet and this one. just to check this shark lock out. No play, up or down, left or right. <clears throat> so that's good. Okay, we're gonna test out uh, the ergonomics and as well as testing out uh, how well the edge is still holding up as far as it biting into this uh, pine two by four, soft wood, just mainly checking for ergos. Alrighty, um, if you saw me stop the cutting and check something out, whenever I had my finger up here, I, I don't know if I was maybe pushing back on this a little bit, but it felt like it, it was it was starting to unlock. Uh, but most comfortable grip for me was in this hammer grip, and it, it, in my opinion, bit into the wood really, really nicely. Still sharp. Okay, now we're going to uh, cut up uh, several different types of material, see how well it does. we got some 3 8 inch industrial bungee cord, um, some 1100 series paracord. It's a little bit thicker than the, uh, the 550. And we got some thick 
saddle leather, some blue jean denim. We're gonna cut up maybe half of this. And two different size uh, dense tubing. One inch right here and half inch there. All right, we'll get started with the paracord first. All right, we'll leave the rest of that for another knife. Um, it, it slides pretty well. One thing I did notice right off the back with the type of cuts I was doing right here, like if you're on a cutting board, um, I usually hold the knife kind of like this in a sawing motion. And if you, I wasn't able to do that, it this was ripping my hand up. So my only other option was down here, but I couldn't get the control so, you know, it's not my favorite. Or um, with the finger on top like that, still not enough uh, power down below. Being pushing through, at least for me. Sorry, my neighbor's revving his boat in the background. Yep, it's definitely got some dull spots. And I could, it was evident whenever I was cutting the denim. I'd say it's still pretty good. Alrighty, we're gonna attempt to cut through the this uh, copper wire, three copper wires. It's for, uh, I think it's Romax, for industrial, I mean for houses. We're gonna use a rubber mallet. If I can find it, yep, here it is. Here's the rubber mallet. Okay, let me make sure y'all are in frame. You'll see that? Yeah, I think so. That's where it cut it right there. You can see the three spots, but uh, it doesn't look like it chipped or anything. Let's see. Still good to go. Now, of course, if I cut slowly, it'll probably snag from the previous cutting. Okay, like right there. So it might, I'm sure it has a dull spot, but no, no damage. Alrighty. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of edge impact testing on this uh, aluminum bar stock. We're just gonna give the knife about three good whacks onto the apex, and, and I marked that out so I have an idea where I hit it. And I'm probably gonna try to hit it uh, probably up here and toward that belly. Let's see. There's the impact. As you can see, it did a pretty nice number. And let's see. Any damage to the edge? no damage as far as like chipping maybe some some blunting where i hit it right up in this area i think 
I'll have to look back at the footage and see exactly where I hit it, but I don't see any edge damage as far as I can see. If y'all see something, y'all just let me know. Okay, let's see how it cuts. No, nope, it was already, you know, starting to get dull, but let's see. Yeah, I'd call that still a, a perfectly good working edge. You can feel the few little hangups, but it's still usable and no major damage. There you go. I'm pleased. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed that cutting footage. Uh, I think it did uh, very well. Um, let's take a close look at this. You have, like I said, a nice clip point blade shape with a, in my opinion, very attractive stone wash finish. Hides wear really well. You don't really see any of the uh, cutting that I've done with this blade. At least I don't see it. You may see something. Uh, you have a saber ground blade, flat ground right here with some nice flat up here for your fixed angle sharpening systems. Um, you have the Demco, Demco written right there and the blade steel, which is Austin A, which the A is for annealed. Um, and Austin, from what I've found, is similar to Full 40C, which is a good budget steel. These are made in Taiwan and <coughs> I was told, or some people have said that these are made in the Cold Steel Taiwan factory, and I can believe that from the uh, quality of it. You have two different opening opening uh, <laughs> opening parts on the blade. You have a, a blade hole right here that is not sharp whatsoever, and you can use that blade hole to uh, slow roll it, and you can use that to spidey flick it as well. You also have dual thumb studs that are removable. You can see the slot right there. They're nice and comfortable. Um, and you can also roll them out with that. And let's see, I don't know if, yeah, you can spidey flick it with the thumb studs as well. You have a nice jumping up here that definitely grabs onto the finger. You do have a small sharpening notch right here that does clear the plunge. Um, and it's about, you know, the littlest you could do right there by clearing it. <clears throat> Look up top right here. This is the shark lock mechanism. You have fine cut jimping right there that does grab onto the finger. It's not, you know, not that uncomfortable after a while maybe, but not too bad. One thing that I did notice about the shark lock, I was having trouble, which I can kind of probably show that. Got it, got it pulled back right now, and it's not falling down. And I was having trouble every once in a while. It that's, That was happening to me because I've never really heard anybody explain how to use it. You know, it's, it's, it's spring-loaded, as you can see. Well, what you're going to do when you do this is you're pretty much pulling it, like, up. Like, up and back. And then that releases the... Uh, that releases it from the blade tang right there. If you just push it straight back and down, nothing comes, like that's where it goes. So if you go up and back, it's very easy to close. Riding on bearings, very smooth action. Um, after beating on this thing, I have no play up or down, left or right. Do have a little flex, uh, being that this material for the handle scales is FRN. It's a gray color with a diamond uh texture pattern on there feels nice it's uh it's got some tech it's got some grip to it unlike some you know frn scales that i've used in the past this one's not bad it does have inset let's see if i can show you that inset stainless liners in there that have been heavily skeletonized look at those big old chunks out of there um, the shark lock has been patented you can see right there there's a the patent number and you do have skeletonization on the top as well. Um, with the shark lock and the opening mechanism, I mean, in the opening uh, choices you have up here, uh, and that you have a tip up left or right hand because it gives you the left-handed clip. So this is completely ambidextrous. Um, one thing that you know, some people, somebody said they didn't like, but I, I kind of like it. I don't really care for the you know 80 20.5 written here, but I like that they put the flat spot like kind of like Spyderco does. So whenever you're trying to get this in and out of the pocket, 
it's not getting caught on this uh, texture right here. Um, let's see, what does that say? Pennsylvania, what is it? I can't, I'm, I'm looking upside down, but got some writing on there, not Demco knives, kind of like on his uh, customs. You have a Torx T10 pivot and T6 body screws with a big old hole for a lanyard right there. You have like a geared pattern that is flush with the scales into this FRN backspacer. <clears throat> um, ergos, on, during all the cutting, I found it was, it was, you know, rather comfortable. It wasn't the best in the world. I mean, I, I, most of these flat scaled knives aren't. And being it's a little thinner, I did notice a little fatigue in the hand. And as long as I was in the hammer grip or if I was cutting like this, pulling away from me, like cutting cardboard like this, it was fine. I did, I did even choke up. I don't, I don't know if I, I did it on the, in the video, but I did it with the other blade shape a good bit is choke up. But you gotta be careful. It's not really a forward toil. Um, only time I did notice any problems with the ergonomics in our hot spot was whenever I was cutting into the, uh, like the downward force onto my table that I use. Um, that's how I usually kind of like grab it like this and a pinch grip and, and kind of saw. And when I do this, I noticed this was tearing up my hand pretty bad. So the only way I could do this downward force cuts like that is either put my hand up there and I can't get as much pressure behind the cut and it's not as comfortable or I could put my, my index finger and still I don't have as much control and I don't I can't get enough power like that. So just something to note depending on what you're using your knife for. You have a robust tip for piercing. Um, make sure I didn't miss anything. Let's check it out in the pocket. It's not a deep carry by any means. It does go in and out. It functions nicely. Um, goes in and out nicely. But you do have a good little bit sticking up. Doesn't really bother me because it's gray. It's, you know, kind of unassuming. Um, uh, let's get some size comparisons and a weight. Let's get the weight real quick. Then we'll wrap it up with my few little nitpicks. Oops. Start off in grams, 100.5 grams, 3.54 ounces. So that's that's awesome in my opinion. Um, size comparisons. The only two that I could find that I have right off the back that I, that are really close is the uh, Benchmade Mini Adamas. is pretty much identical in size. There you go. And the Best Tech. Texel is also very similar in length. There we go. And then let's see, two more. You have the Spyderco Power 3 and Spyderco PM2. So it's in between these two, closer to the Power 3, in my opinion. And just in case you have the full size, the regular AD20, and you want to see the size difference before you buy one. Let's see. I'm probably, I don't think I'll be able to put this all on frame unless I back out. So I'm going to back out a little bit. So as you can see, it's a good bit smaller than the uh, full size 8020. And a good bit lighter, of course. Uh, all right. So nitpicks. It, and, you know, it's ground thick, but, I mean, it's going for that hard use, uh, even though it's that FRN. I mean, I was beating on this thing. I think it could handle a good bit. Only good thing is when you have it, you have uh, it's ground thick behind that edge, it's going to give you a more obtuse bevel. So you're, you're not prone to uh, chipping it out, you know, because you have more meat behind that impact. So that's why you don't see any uh, any any chips or at all or any rolls from that, you know, hitting, hitting impact stuff I did. Um, also talked about the hot spot I get whenever, um, I'm cutting like this and that pinch grip. Uh, that's the only time I really feel this other than that, I can work around it. And lastly, of course, I know the price is going to be a deal breaker for some people. And I understand that it is expensive. Um, 
I I wanted to experience it, and uh, I will say, you know, it's one that I do recommend. You know, if you like it, the price is okay with you. It's it's a very fun knife to carry. Um, you know, if you don't want to spend, I think this one is like three twenty five because this is FRN on this one. The G ten one I have, I think is four twenty five. This is a big old boy right here. This is a big beast. Uh, if you want a more compact version, a little bit, a good bit lighter version, you know, it's a good option. Aus 10A is going to get get all the EDC uh, cutting stuff that I need done. I personally have been carrying this one a lot more just because this blade shape is conducive to type of cuts. I like to make a whole bunch. I'm, I'm constantly in the shop dragging that tip, cutting stuff, cutting open packages, uh, cutting into bags and stuff like that. And the Warncliffe blade really uh, lends itself very good for that. So there you go. That's the two blade shapes. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolutely wonderful day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.